The global monetary system is changing and it's gonna make some people poor and some people really rich. And how many people achieve wealth and freedom depends on what your own personal choices are. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the changes that we're facing and the opportunities that it's creating and how to be positioned. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back everybody. So today we are gonna talk about this new global monetary system that's being formed right now. Um, this is massive. I've been talking about it. We talked about the history, I did a two-part series about the history of how the global power, the reserve currency of the world has changed, how it's gone uh, from country to country to country, how it got to the United States and the changes that we're seeing right now. Um, and if you haven't seen those two-part videos, I recommend that you do. I'll go ahead and link to it up above. Um, so make sure to watch those. Those were really good videos and, and important to understand so you can see the changes. But we have this new global monetary system. It's changing right now. And like I said at the intro, it's gonna create, uh, unfortunately, it's gonna create a lot of loss and a lot of poor people. But it's also gonna create a lot of opportunity and can create a lot of wealth if you know what to watch for and if you're paying attention. And that's what I wanna talk, talk about today. Now, before I get into that, unfortunately, I wanna talk about this. Um, I've seen, uh, unfortunately, I've been, I'm being uh, impersonated on YouTube. Um, there are scammers out there and just beware of this. Um, I've seen uh, people have been sharing this and like there's a guy going around and leaving comments on YouTube videos and saying to join Mark Moss's Telegram and send him money and this and that. I don't have a Telegram. Don't send anyone to a Telegram pretending to be money. Um, I'm not doing that. Uh, it's not me. I'm not asking for money. Uh, please ignore that. If you see any more instances, of this, please report it to me because I'm trying to do all I can to stop this. I don't want anyone to get hurt in this. Uh, it's not me. Don't send any money to anybody on Telegram. I'm not there. I'm not going to ask for it. Okay. Uh, so at, at sometimes I'll give you guys free reports and guides, and you can give me your email or something like that. But I'm never going to ask you to send me money on Telegram or something like that. So anyway, beware of scammers. Uh, not just on me, impersonators of me, but anybody. I hate to bring that up, but it's important. So just please watch out for that and bring it to my attention if you see it. Now getting back into the good stuff. So um, like I said, the global monetary system is changing and, and it's changing fast. It's changing right before our eyes. Um, there's a quote from Mike Maloney said that mankind stands at the crossroads and the path that humanity chooses will have more impact on our prosperity and freedom than any event in mankind. And I know this sounds kind of hypey, but we are at that crossroads. We are there right now. History books in 50 to 100 years ago will be written about this exact period that we're living in right now. We are living in a history lesson right now and we can see the signs if you know what to look for. Again, go back and watch that two-part series. Uh, but that, that's where we're at. And which path are you going to take? Which path is mankind going to take? And hopefully I can help you to take the right one. So the reserve currency is changing, all right? Again, we've had that two-part series. Now, we don't know what's next, but we do know that it's changing. And so if we don't know what's next, what are we gonna do? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. We do know that change is the only constant thing in life, and that's uh, Greek philosophy. So the only thing that we know in life is that change is always there. And uh, as you can see in this little chart here on the screen, you can see that the reserve currencies of the world have changed, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands, France, Britain, and then the US about every 100 years. And we're at that 100 year uh, mark right now. Now, we do know that it's changing really fast. Like I said, I've given you lots of reasons as to why, but right now what's happening just literally in the last few weeks um, is that we are seeing the currencies race to the bottom. And what does that mean? So uh, this, it, this has been happening. It's, it, it, it's something that's happening with a whimper, not with a bang, as I made, uh, made a case in that other video. But um, a few weeks ago, the Fed, the United States Federal Reserve, lowered rates again. So we'd been lowering them, then we stopped it, then we started raising the rates, and then we lowered them again. So that was a massive event. It was a shock to the system, to the whole world's global system. And what happened is as soon as it lowered the rates, all the other currencies of the world had to start, uh, start adjusting down and they had to start devaluing their currencies. Now, what does devaluing their currencies mean? It means devaluing, taking the value out, stealing from the people that own that value. That's what that means. All right, we throw these words around without really thinking about what they mean. 
And then what happened is after that is then China released their peg. So they've met, they've tried to keep their currency pegged with a dollar about seven to one. And they haven't been able to sustain that peg because of the Fed lowering the rates and so forth and the other currencies around the world. And they had to release that peg. And when they released that peg, it was the biggest drop that we've had. And so um, lots of turmoil going on with currencies. This is the fiat currencies. That's what we're talking about. And so while we're seeing this massive turmoil going on with the currencies, uh, every currency, the you know the dollar, China, France, you name it, the euro, every currency is under attack. Obviously, we've seen in Venezuela and Argentina, their currencies are dropping and becoming worthless, um, littering, littering the streets, literally. But at the same time, we're seeing all the currencies lose value. We're seeing competition. So we have Bitcoin. Of course, I talk about Bitcoin all the time. Uh, but you know, we're starting to see in, in countries where it's completely failed that Bitcoin is starting to take the place if not almost replace some of the country's fiat currencies. Um, we're starting to see in the United States massive adoption. Our, the United States is the largest financial system uh, center of the world. Uh, Wall Street, right, is basically runs the world. And our financial system is building on top of it. Goldman Sachs, the leader of the pile, Fidelity, E-Trade, you know, you name it, TD Ameritrade, uh, ICE, which is, runs the New York Stock Exchange. Everybody is building on uh, Bitcoin right now. Uh, it's been 10 years. It's going strong. The longer it's around, the longer it will be around. 10 years is a long time. And it's the scarcest, hardest asset in history. What does that mean? That means it's the scarcest asset, meaning there's only 21 million. And when it's gone, it's gone. And put that into perspective, there's not even enough Bitcoin for all the millionaires in the United States. Just the millionaires in the United States. There's not even enough Bitcoin for each of them to have one. That's how scarce it is. Now, a lot of people own a lot more than one, so there's not gonna be enough to go around. It's the scarcest asset and it's the hardest asset, meaning it can't be manipulated like money. So we have Bitcoin and I'm not gonna go into that because I talk about it all the time, but that is, we have the currencies rushing to devalue themselves and, 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 and uh, ruin themselves and race to the bottom. And now we have increased competition. We have Bitcoin, we have Facebook's Libra coin. And Facebook's Libra coin is uh, basically, they're trying to come up with their own financial system. Now, Facebook has, um, you know, they, they came out and announced that they're going to create this, what they call a stable coin, meaning, and unlike Bitcoin, it's actually gonna be pegged to something, and they're gonna peg it to a, a basket of currencies and bonds, and I'm not gonna go super deep into that because I've talked about that a lot. Uh, but what's happening is it's really escalated this, this competition because they have this massive user base. So Facebook has like 30% of the world's population is on Facebook. So like overnight, they could bring in like billions and billions of people. And it has the governments really scared, as you can see up on the screen right here in the highlighted text. Um, the United States government is really scared. Uh, they believe it's a national security crisis. Um, they don't like the fact that Facebook is basically trying to create their own financial system to compete with the US dollar. And that's what's happening. So we have the currencies are all competing against themselves to do value. We have competition from a free market thing like Bitcoin. We have competition from Facebook, which has 30% of the world's users. And then if that's not enough, we have China. So now China is coming in and says that they are launching their own cryptocurrency. They've been working on this for over five years. And China says that their state cryptocurrency is going to rival Bitcoin. And it's ready to go, they say. They say they're ready to launch it. And again, it's gonna be some form of a stable coin. It's gonna be backed by their currency, pegged to their currency. And um, that's massive. China has a massive amount of the world's population. And so if they launch their own um, stable coin, their own cryptocurrency, they could take a massive share away from the global financial system, from the dollars, from Bitcoin, and, and there's this competition. And if it's not enough to start competing with China, now we have Binance jumping in. Um, uh, Binance just announced that they are, um, they are coming out with a platform to build stable coins. So Binance, if you're not aware, look at the highlighted text on the screen, they're the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. And basically they've developed a system to help other countries create their own financial systems, to create their own competition. They're encouraging countries to all create their own currencies so they don't have to be reliant on the US dollar anymore. So we have 
all the currencies, the dollar, the yuan, the, the euro, et cetera, all competing against each other and racing to the bottom. We have Bitcoin competing and showing the world the hardest, scarcest uh, deflationary currency and what that's going to do. Of course, I'm saying that my favorite, the winner. Uh, at the same time, we have Facebook, which has the largest user base in the world jumping in the ring. We have China, the country with the largest population jumping in the ring. And now we have the world's largest exchange creating a platform to help all the countries create their own. So we have massive competition in the global financial system. So when you add all this up, what does it mean? It means we're going to have massive devaluations already. The countries, the, the uh, world's countries and are, are devaluing their currencies again, removing the value out. We're going to see continued competition, cryptocurrency competition, um, countries comp um, competing. Um, we already talked about it in the two-part series. If you, if you watched it, we talked about um, how the dollar is already losing its status. And the world works off of the dollar system and it uses SWIFT. As SWIFT is the system that it transfers money around. We, uh, I talked about how a new system was created called Instex, which is to compete against SWIFT. So we have the dollars already being competed away. Uh, we have the world, uh, the, the other countries creating their own cryptocurrencies. We have other cryptocurrencies. So we have all these things going on and something's going to happen. But who? Who is going to win, right? That's probably the question you're asking. Um, I'm proposing that question. Who's going to win? Well, we don't know. We don't know, but we need to take measures anyway. We, we know it is happening right now. And it's kind of like a crack in a dam. Like you could see like a little crack and you could see like a little bit of water trickling through. And in the beginning, it's just a little bit of a trickle, not a big deal. If you catch that little trickle before it's too late, you can fix it. However, once that crack really starts opening up, it's going to be too late. And so right now we're seeing the signs all around us and we need to start taking action just like we see like a little bit of a trickle. All right, by the time it busts wide open, it's going to be too late. And if you're too late, you could lose a lot of money. And if you're right and you're early, you could make a lot of money. Like I said, we're in this very, very transitional time and it's both scary and it's exciting. So it's scary because change is scary. I'm also scared and a little bit sad for the people that aren't paying attention, but it's exciting because I am paying attention and I'm watching these signs every single day and I'm moving and I'm adjusting. And it's going to create this massive wealth transfer and uh, basically from the people who aren't paying attention to the people that are. There's people that aren't paying attention or people that don't believe something will happen. And then you have people that are ready and waiting. And um, you can be ready and waiting without having to bet your life that it does happen. So like I'm ready and waiting, but if it doesn't happen, I'm still okay, right? So you can play it. Um, but if you are ready, you're gonna be trans you're gonna be receiving in, be on the receiving end of the wealth being transferred from the people that aren't paying attention. Because what happens is, while this happens, while this change happens, we're going to see assets going up and some assets are going down. And if you have assets that go up, when the assets go down, you have the assets to go and now buy those, those other assets, the, the ones that have gone down super cheap, the sale of a lifetime. And so the transfer, the wealth transfer that I talk about, it's invisible and it's only invisible to people that are paying attention, it, or I'm saying it's only visible. So it's invisible to the people that aren't paying attention. They don't understand how this wealth gets transferred. But if you are paying attention to it, you can understand it and you can take advantage of it. So how? How? I've given you, I've set the stage. What are we going to do? So we have to be ready, but how are we going to do that? So where we're at right now, I still believe that we have room for stocks to run. As a matter of fact, I made a video back in like February of this year where I said that uh, the stock market wasn't done. I thought we could see another 30% this year and we are close to that. I'm going to link to that video up above. Um, so I still believe that stocks have room to run. However, we are in a very, very late stage in a bear market. Uh, the world economy is crumbling all around us and anything can happen at any, any time. So it's time you have to be ready to move. If you're an advanced investor, trader, you can take advantage of more upside in the stock market. However, um, one of the quotes that I like to talk about was Mayor Rothschild, who's passed wealth down through generations, hundreds of years of generations. And they asked him, how did you manage to keep your wealth for so long? And he said, I always got out a little bit early. So maybe you want to get out early. If you're a little bit more sophisticated, you want to stay in it to get that room. Uh, we want to be ready to move either way. Uh, we need to make sure we have cash to take advantage of these bargains. Um, I like to also have cash. I like to have cash flowing investments. Um, and there's different ways that we can do that, get cash flow. Real estate is obviously one of those. Um, gold as insurance, Bitcoin for growth. There's a, there's a few ways that we can do that. 
And over the next couple of weeks, I am going to break this down for you, all right? So I'm setting the stage, but this is, uh, I've already gone way too long on this video, so I can't go through the whole thing. But over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna break this down for you. I'm gonna show you how you can test your existing portfolio, how you can build a better portfolio, um, how you can find new assets to add to your portfolio to balance that. We'll talk about gold, real estate, cash, cash flow, cryptos, Bitcoin, stocks, etc. And I want to help you get ready to protect what you have and grow what you have in this time of turmoil. So over the next few weeks, we're going to go over that. Leave me comments down below on which of those topics you want to hear about most so I know how to prioritize the content. Of course, give me likes on this if you like it. I'm working hard for you guys. And if you don't like it, give me some thumbs down. Either way, let me know. I want to hear from you. Leave a comment down below so I know what content to bring to you next. And that's it. To your success, I'm out.